Good morning, everybody. It's Jonathan here with the next in our series of assemblies from us at Christchurch, especially for you at Isha Church School. I'm sure you remember Darren's assembly last week with his laughing bag. Uh, well, I haven't got one of those this week, but I am picking up on the story leading on from the story uh, that he told you last week. You'll remember that his story involved an elderly gentleman called Abraham and his elderly wife, Sarah. And you'll remember that despite their great age, God enabled them to have a son. They called him Isaac, which means laughter, and hence Darren's laughter bags that he kept playing with. Now, in my story this week, we're moving forward another 70 or 80 years. Isaac himself, Sarah and Abraham's son, is now also an elderly man. He's in bed, he's blind, and he thinks he's getting towards the end of his life on earth. But Isaac himself had two sons. The older son's name was Esau, which means something like hairy. He was a big, strong, um, sports-loving boy. He liked playing games with his mates, and he liked especially hunting, going out of the field and killing things to eat. The younger son's name was Jacob, which means something like cheat. He was very different. He was his mother's favourite, actually, and she liked working with him in the, in the kitchen and plotting things, wonderful things they might do together. But Isaac liked Esau best, because he was big and strong and could hunt. So one day, when Isaac was old and, as I say, lying in bed, he called Esau to him and said, My son, I'm feeling hungry. Why don't you go out and hunt for something tasty, some animal out in the countryside, bring it home and make some of that, that wonderful stew you used to make. I just, just feel like a bowl of that stew. And then, when you come back, I've got something really rather special I want to tell you about what's going to happen to you when I finally pass away. And so Esau went off to do his hunting carrying his bow and his arrow and big sharp, big sharp knife. As he rushed out, he didn't notice that in the corner of their tent was his mum. His mum's name was Rebecca. And she was a bit of a sneak as well. She was listening to what was going on. And she got worried that what was going to happen was that when Esau came back, Isaac, his dad, was going to make him his heir, give him the control of the family business when he died. And so Rebecca went off and found Jacob. And she said, I've got a thought, Jacob. What's that, Mum? said Jacob. And she explains this plan. And so she cooks up some stew, with some meat she's already got in the kitchen, puts it in a bowl and gives it to Jacob. There it is. And she says to Jacob, now, your dad will recognise your voice from Esau's, so practice and speak a bit more deeply, a bit more gruffly, like your big hearty brother. OK, Mum said Jacob. Yeah, that sounds pretty good, said Rebecca. But you also don't feel like your brother, and I think you, your dad might want to give you a hug. So why don't you wrap round your arm this animal skin? Because that will make you feel rough and hairy, just like your brother. Oh, good idea, said uh, Jacob. Remember that deep voice, said his mum. Yes, mum, he said. And in he went, 
to see his dad. Hello, dad, he said. Isaac said, is that really you, Esau? You sound a bit odd. Oh, yes, it's definitely me. And I've brought that stew for you. Oh, yes, I can smell it, said Isaac. That smells absolutely delicious. And he settled down, got his bowl of stew, enjoyed his meal. It really was very tasty. And when he finished, he said, that was really nice, uh, Esau. That was really, really nice. Oh, good, said, said Esau. But your voice still seems strange, said Isaac. Could I just, could I just feel you? Let me just stroke your arm. So he reached out and stroked Jacob's arm. And it felt rough and hairy, just like his brother. Yeah, it's you, Esau, he said. Jolly good. Okay, well, listen, I've got something to tell you. When I pass away, I want you, my son, to take over the family business and to be in charge of everything that I leave behind. And I want to lay my hand on you. He laid his hand on his hairy arm and he blessed him said, the family property is all yours. Bye-bye, Dad, said Jacob. And off he went and told his mum what had happened. Good, said Rebecca. That sounds as if we've got it right. But just then, who should come back from hunting and from doing a bit of cooking but the older brother, Esau, and he came along and he was carrying a bowl of stew as well. There's his bowl of stew. And he took it in and said, hello, Dad. Hello, Esau, said Isaac. I've made that stew you asked for, said Isaac, said, said Esau. But Isaac was worried. I've already had the stew, he said. Not my stew, you haven't, said Esau. Oh, no, said Isaac. I've made the promise to the wrong man. That must have been your brother cheating me. Oh, dear, said Esau. That brother of mine, you can't trust him. I'll go and deal with him. No good, said Isaac. I've already made my promise, and my promise will stick. And so Esau rushed out, looking everywhere for his brother Jacob, who tricked him out of his inheritance. But Jacob had run away, and however fast Esau ran after him, he didn't manage to catch him. And that is the end of our story this week. Next week, we'll hear what happened next to Esau and Jacob. Dave's going to tell that part of the story. It does have a good and happy ending, I assure you. But it takes God to get involved to sort things out before that happens. So, you ready for next week? And in the meantime, I'm going to say a little prayer. And if you'd like to make it your own, just say Amen at the end. Dear Lord God, we thank you for stories. Help us to be patient when bad, sneaky people seem to get all the best things. Because sometimes, in your good time, the right side will win in the end. Amen. Thank you everybody for listening and look forward to seeing you in a few weeks time. Bye.